All right, guys, it's Josh here with On The Wrong Lead, and we are back with another one of our Intro to Horse Racing videos. Um, we are going to be talking about the four building blocks of handicapping today. So, got a little presentation here going for you, and we're going to talk about these four key concepts when it comes to looking at a race. Um, and those four things being form, class, speed, and pace. So we're going to start off here with form. So form can kind of be broken down just to be in general, how well has the horse been running as of late? Um, and, you know, you can you can kind of look at it a couple of different ways. But me personally, I look at how the horse has been finishing. Has the horse been winning races or has the horse been kind of, you know, just missing the mark, maybe finishing second or third? You know, has the horse been in each of its races if a horse has been running well and finishing the money in its past few races you could say that the horse is in good form um, and likewise in the opposite direction if the horse has been running poorly um, and you know maybe the horse was a good horse at some point but you know it's just been losing races not even being close um, that horse is considered off form or its form is tailing off um, I will say that uh, this is one of the, in, in my opinion, one of the more important uh, things to kind of grasp and, and take a look at um, because it, it'll help kind of point out horses that you might miss because of some of the other factors. Like maybe, you know, the speed figures aren't that good. Maybe the uh, the horse is going up in class. Maybe uh, the horse is kind of against it in the pace scenario, but maybe the horse is just a winner. Or as kind of, you know, in the opposite direction as the old school guys kind of say, you know, like Tommy Massis will say, the horse is a pack animal. He just wants to run next to his friends and he doesn't care about passing anybody. He's just going to be in third and fourth and just never win. Um, so that's kind of important, uh, important way to look at, um, you know, form and, and just kind of, a, like I said, a quick overview. Each of these topics, um, at some point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to delve more deep into each of the topics, uh, probably do our own video for each of it. But this is, like I said, just a quick overview over um, these four concepts. Um, another thing to note is that with overseas, uh, overseas, Hong Kong, Australia, you know, Europe, they pretty much handicap form to a fault um they don't have uh you know they don't have pps like us you know where we have the speed figures and we have fractions i mean they some of them do have fractions but um you know they're a little bit more uh more keen on on how well the horse has been running if, if the horse is in good form or not um but like i said that's just one of the four building blocks the second one is uh full disclosure one I do not like. I actually wrote the top class does not matter. I mean, it's it's a joke. There there is some merit to class, um, but I will say this is not my strong suit. This is not something I spend a lot of time looking at. Um, you know, someone like Caleb, someone like uh, our, our our good friend Murphy, they would probably be a little bit better um, suited to making the standalone video for this. Um, but I, I can go over this kind of, you know, quickly. Uh, class can be simplified to how good are the horses this horse has been running against? Like, how good are they? What kind of company has this horse been keeping? In the U.S., there's a class hierarchy. You start with graded stakes, you know, grade ones being the highest, all of the, the, the best races. The Kentucky Derby is a grade one race. Uh, the Santa Anita Handicap is a grade one race. Um, just to name a couple of the big races, the Breeders' Cup, uh, Classic is a grade one race. Most of the Breeders' Cup races are grade one races. Um, and then you get grade twos and grade threes, and, and it just kind of goes slightly lower and lower. Then you have your non-graded stakes, your listed stakes, overnight stakes. I kind of just put them all in one. If it's not a graded stakes, I just consider it a non-graded stakes. I'm sure that, you know you, you get like your state bred and restricted stakes, and like there's a little bit of nuance there, but like I said, different video. Allowance, same thing. There are multiple levels of allowance races, but essentially this is a horse that is not in for a claiming tag. Um, and kind of also you can kind of put in their optional claimers, which are races where you can be in for a claiming tag, maybe for like a weight allowance or something like that, or you don't have to be a claiming tag. Then you have your claimers, which is, you know, horses that are in for what's called a claiming tag. They're in for a tag. Uh, so anybody can go ahead, put a claim in on the horse, pay whatever the claiming price is, 
and own the horse. Um, then you have your maiden special weights. These are horses who have never won a race, but are not in for a claiming tag. Uh, this is where you see like the future stars as well as uh, the future maiden claimers. So there's a, there's a wide range of um, of uh, level there. And then you have maiden claiming, which is considered the bottom. And then you know generally with claiming maiden claiming allowance, uh, even some stakes races, it's the, the the either the claiming tag price or the stakes the purse involved kind of kind of places as, as, as like the steps in that ladder right but like i said there's i know there's a great graphic out there i think caleb's used it before uh, for for talking about the the class pyramid and hierarchy and all that stuff but um yeah this is not something that i you know pay too much attention to because i let other factors kind of drive how i handicap but what works for me might not work for you and you know it's definitely not the case with with other guys and our team um but i just put a, a copy of a, a you know a quick little snapshot here of a pp uh this horse uh harry's on the loose was running in the silks run which was a uh a listed or a, a non non-graded stakes and if you look down at his pp you see that he started at a claimer which is right here in our little pyramid Went to an optional claimer. Now, it was a state bred. Once again, there's nuance there. We're not going to talk about it now. Uh, but for the most part, that's kind of somewhere. We'll say that's an allowance. Um, another, you know, stayed at that same level. Then moved up to a restricted, non-graded stakes. Once again, another great non-graded stakes. And then went to a grade three. And now is coming back down into a... Um, into a non-graded stick. So you could say that he, this horse is getting some class relief, is what people will say, or this horse is dropping in class. Now, usually dropping in class is more like, hey, a horse is in stakes and is coming down to claiming or allowance, or, you know, the biggest drop is, people consider the biggest drop is going from maiden special weight to maiden claiming. The, the horse is dropping from maiden special weight into the maiden claiming ranks. So these are things that you can, you know, other people pay a lot more attention to and, uh, you know, have way better notes on than I do, but uh, we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, hopefully that, you know, clears some of uh, some of the, the class portion of this video up for you. Uh, speed. I don't have a lot written for speed um, because, you know, speed in general is just how fast has the horse been running? Um, back in the day, it used people used to look at final times and fractional times and, you know, figure all that stuff out. Nowadays, um, in the U.S., Speed figures usually tell the story the easiest way. Um, I will say, though, there are caveats. There are pitfalls you can fall into if you rely on them solely. If you look at the horse with the highest last out buyer, that horse is going to get bet out. But Now, that horse wins, I think, like 30 or 40% of the time. I know there's a stat out there. Um, but it's just important that, you know, you don't take, you know, it, it's another tool, right? Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I think from our team, probably Mark is the biggest class handicapper or on the class speed handicapper out there so i'm i mark I've, I've already decided i'm gonna have mark do the speed video um but uh you know it, it's important to know the difference between the speed figures everyone uses different products right you got uh brisnet you got drf you got timeform us you have the sheets you know the different sheets you know there's like three different sheets products so you kind of have to know how each each bead figure is developed and just find experiment find out what works for you me personally i like brisnet but i don't pay a lot of attention to the speed figures if i want a figure i trust i usually look at timeform um mark is a buyer guy uh you know i think caleb is kind of like me where speed figures are kind of just this nebulous area but i know caleb relies on his sheets a lot um so it's just it kind of you know experiment find it out you know i'm not not to say that i don't use speed figures because i do especially on turf i think you know time form us figs are great on turf but you know speed in general is just how fast has the horse been running how are his speed figures yeah i guess you could kind of say just how are his speed figures compared to the rest of the field like does this horse kind of fit in this race and lastly, let's talk about my favorite and something near and dear to my heart. Uh, everyone knows I love cheap speed. I love horses that get to the front, uh, and that's pace. All right. What will the shape of the race be? Where will each of the horses kind of? It's like a puzzle within a puzzle, right? Where where are each of the horses going to be? Who's going to be in the front? Who's going to be kind of mid pack? Who's going to be coming from the back? Is there going to be a lot of horses in the front? Are there going to be a lot of horses in the back? Right. And it's kind of almost like a balance. Like 
at least the way I kind of look at it, right? If I only see one or two horses on the front, and I see, you know, eight to ten of them all want to come from way off, I'm betting those horses in the front, right? But it's just about, it's it depends on the race shape, right? You have to kind of visualize the race. Now, we're going to, you know, kind of look at, uh, I got a couple things here. Now, I use Brisnet, which has, like, uh, pace figures and... Um, run styles and cure and speed points and other stuff that you can use to make this a little easier but this will work for any pp you use right i'm looking we're going to look start at the top one here right this one right here and if you look at the first and second call you see a bunch of ones now you got this clunker 10 here thrown in but for the most part you see a lot of ones this is a horse i think is going to get to the front right it's going to be on the lead maybe just off the lead right this if this was a three horse race this is our pace setter right here we look at the second horse right over here um on our on this like middle right here now this horse looks like he likes to sit you know just off you know two lengths off at the start one and a half one and three quarters you know was way back you know kind of faded but look at the the two races he ran well in he was three lengths off three lengths off one length off lost by a neck two lengths off one so he's going to be kind of your presser type he's going to be you know right kind of like not too far back but not exactly like on the front right this is going to be the horse that like if this is a three horse race would be just off the lead kind of in the middle of the pack and then you have uh our, our what's called a deep closer a sustained run style here um this horse i mean was 24 lengths behind that first call and won so this horse is just like, I don't care. I'm just walking out of the gate like I'm going to run the same speed the entire way. And that's kind of how you have to look at it, right? Just imagine like running, I don't know, imagine you running like a mile, right? Depending on the type of runner, some people run a lot faster at the front and then they tire the last maybe half mile, quarter mile, right? Some people are able to run the same exact pace the entire time. And other people, you know, probably, you know, run, you know, there's there's just different degrees, right? Different degrees on how, uh, you know, every way, which way in between. And so that's kind of how you got to think about the horses uh, and kind of like visualizing them. Once again, this is like super complex uh, and like you can get as deep into it as you want. Um, but this is definitely going to be a separate video. We'll look at a couple different pace scenarios, extreme pace scenarios and, and other stuff and you know, we'll, we'll get really, really in depth on this in a different video, but I just kind of want to give, you know, a, a quick overview here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I got. You know, we got our four things, right? Form. How well is the horse doing? Is the horse winning races? Is the horse kind of in contention? Is the horse just a loser now? Is the horse off form? Uh, then you have class. What kind of company is this horse keeping? Is this horse, is this a quote unquote easier race for this horse? Or is this a quote unquote harder race for this horse because he's moving up or down in class? Speed. How fast has the horse run? What kind of speed figures are you seeing in the horse? Um, you know, is the, is the horse kind of fit competitively with those speed figures with the rest of the field? And then pace. All right. What is the shape of the race? Which horses are going to be on the lead? Which horses are going to be in the back? Who's going to press the pace? Who's going to make a middle move? Just kind of, you know, thinking about how each horse is going to run. As always, please leave a comment, like our video, subscribe, do what you need to do. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, hit me up on Discord. Um, and if you guys got any questions, man, just let me know. Thanks.